In this video, I will share seven ways roofing contractors are cutting corners. If you are the homeowner, please watch this video to the end if you're about to hire a roofing contractor. I'm a contractor myself. I've seen all seven ways in real life. If you want to avoid headaches in the future, make sure you write the contractor right in the first place. So here are my seven ways how roofing contractors are cutting corners and can cost you thousands of dollars in damages and headaches years later. I know it sounds obvious and most contractors do pull permits, but unfortunately a lot of contractors still think that they can save some money. I've seen uh, so many cases where people would go on the Craigslist or classify listing page and will hire a roofer direct, uh, bypassing company, they, we call them chuck in the trucks, they'll hire them to save money. And one thing that comes with save money is save money everywhere you can, including pulling permits. I want you to think about permits the way I look at the permits. Permit is a public record. A lot of times that permit, it'll be your leverage to deal with a bad job. Here's why pulling permits is so important. I want you to think about it as a public record, whether you like what government does, some people don't pull in permits because they want to be regulated. Trust me, when it comes to roofing, this regulation is good. Even if city inspector does not know nothing about roofing and he'll come inspect the job and pass it on, the liability does not go to city, it's still on a roofing contractor because city inspector often don't know what he's looking at, but it's a public record. You can use that public record as a leverage when you go against contractor, maybe in court, maybe you have money dispute, maybe he didn't do it right and you didn't notice right away. Maybe city inspector passed the inspection, but then six months later, roof still leaks. I've seen so many jobs when I ask homeowners, who did your job five years ago? And people could not remember. I mean, we all move like, do you remember who were cutting your grass five years ago, who installed your floors a couple of years ago? We forget those things. So pulling permits is crucial in construction because you can always go back and you can notify the city that a contractor who did your job did not do the proper work they can actually do something to his license if he did something shady at least you have the public information and it's always going to go uh, against that contractor and of your license and registration i understand that a lot of states license is not required states like texas but you still can get voluntarily licensed like for example in indiana you don't have a roofer license but you can become a general contractor and you can pull a permits with a general contractor license i love licensing because licensing for me means continuous education i go to a lot of training by manufacturers all right that's how you shingle a roof to make it straight and watertight siding has a vinyl siding institute we go every year there and when i sit in the room of 100 150 installers who install siding daily it's amazing to me how many of those guys don't pass the test why because we know it all someone teached us how to do things 20 years ago and we still do it that way well when you're a licensed contractor you actually required to get continuous education to keep educating yourself and actually uh, you have to study and to pass the test. Trust me, it's not going to hurt your contractor to go through two days of training once a year, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four days. If you live in states like California or Florida, those contractors go through a lot. I'm a licensed contractor in the state of Florida. Uh, last year, I have to take two tests. One of them was six and a half hours. Another one was four hours. But in Florida, you still can find a lot of guys who are not licensed and it will give you a better deal. Ask yourself why they're not licensed, why the job is cheaper, and what are you really giving away? Because sooner or later, quality somewhere will suffer and your roof will leak. That's what happens when you cut a lot of corners. I also will teach you a few tricks how to screen your roofing contractor, the person who's trying to sell you a roof. How can you use your knowledge about ice and water barrier to screen and qualify your roofing contractor for a job? Because ice and water barrier is also a barrier between good guys and bad guys in the industry. I've seen contractors who will advise homeowner not to replace old shingles. In reality, oftentimes, 
it happens because contractor doesn't want to deal with a messy job i know a lot of guys who practice it daily they pretty much go in they want to in and out fast they tell you they want to save your money uh, some guys who do replace uh, remove shingles they don't install under limit at all we still see a lot of jobs like that again we were doing it 20 30 years ago today you are required to install ice and water barrier in most states especially up north it's a great practice to have good solid roofing system also synthetic underlayment is pretty much standard today but what's happening is not only they uh, might not install it guys who do install it they might save money their money not your money you might be paying for premium products if they don't specify what ice and water what underlayments they using most likely they're going with the cheapest brand and they can be saving three four five hundred dollars per job you know if you do five jobs a week great saving for them fifteen hundred dollars but ask yourself this what if contractor who install your job used everything premium right now you have insurance claim insurance is paying you them your new contractor money to replace it to the condition it was before before it was premium now you're getting cheated by using uh cheap accessories cheap underlayments you don't even know it so they're cutting the corner your qual quality of your roof is going down it is not doing nothing about it i have even seen contractors who are not specifying what shingles they're using they would not put it in writing they just would say something like architectural shingles usually happens in florida the reason i know it because of our amazing audience uh, a lot of homeowners sending us quotes saying hey dimitri can you look at this quote and by the way you can do it i love looking at quotes i want to be your advocate so if you go in between two or three quotes and you don't know which one to choose i would like to look at it for you and give you my feedback who has a better product better price and who I would go with. It's not a hard thing to do. It does cost a little bit of money. I mean, most manufacturers, you're talking about small fee, couple dollars per square. You're talking about $70, $100. Depends on the manufacturer. The reason contractors are not doing it, either laziness, lack of process, or they don't want to spend money. It's extra $100 they can save. So they pitch you that this roof will have this lifetime warranty well in reality most shingle manufacturer will only have 10 years out of the box warranty if you want to enhance warranty if you want a manufacturer to back it up you have to register it which brings me to point number five so most manufacturers require at least three accessories by that brand a lot of roofers have this mentality that oh brand just wants to make more money and i'm pretty sure that's the case but it's okay for brands to make more money when the consumer gets better product at the end better coverage when you are end consumer who just purchased the roof actually have legit warranty and in case you know your roof fails five years uh, down the road you can call the manufacturer when your roofer is out of business manufacturer will come out and say yeah you use all our accessories everything is done properly now we have to honor the warranty it happens all the time but also what happens manufacturers comes out saying well your roofer is, is out of business he did not register warranty and he did not use our accessory and shingles don't have that enhanced warranty and the problem a lot of times it's not even about shingles so those are super super important guys make sure that your roofer tells you what accessories what brands he's using we here at my company we do use uh, some other accessories not from brands that we install because we like them better but we don't sacrifice the warranty for it so if we can use three accessories to get a warranty other two we might use of other brand sometimes you have to install product maybe that you're not a fan of but if it's good, better for the warranty just do it number six is huge i see it all the time also comes with the laziness and with the roofers not willing to go extra mile not replacing rotted wood not inspecting thoroughly underlayments i see wavy plywood i mean you putting you spending 10 15 20 thousand dollars on your new roofing system to replace the roof is a couple hundred dollars unfortunately what's happening in the roofing industry and i've caught roofers who work for me several times 
um, they just want to move fast. So for them, they might, you know, average crew might get, let's say $2,000 a day of labor to remove and install new shingles. Now, let's say you open it up, you open your roofing system and you see two or three boards and you don't have it handy. Now you have to go to the store, you're talking about a couple hours. So you promise your homeowner that you will charge them, you know, $70 per plywood replace, you charge them X amount of labor, let's say $75 an hour to replace rotted wood. So on paper, the promise is there. On paper, all the contractors are doing it. In the reality, unfortunately, a lot of times you're like, Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it's not that wavy. Or, you know, we, it, it'll be just fine. And they just install a new roofing system on the wavy deck and delamination and stuff like that. Sometimes they just feel horrible or don't know how to approach you and show you pictures, maybe come up with a recommendation. Some contractors are just really bad at sales. They feel bad about coming to you and asking you extra three or four thousand dollars to replace the entire deck and it happens all the time so i would say out of a 100 roofs that my company does two three we do complete redeck i mean yes it costs about three thousand dollars but if you have huge gaps between the decking on houses that were built in 30s 40s 50s you're actually required to do it by code so when your roofer comes to you and saying hey you have rotted wood or i recommend you to upgrade your plywood because of you know it's wavy it's not up to code you know whatever the case is i do recommend please let him do it make sure the foundation of of your roof the decking is uh, structurally sound because that's important you don't want to install you know brand new roofing system on something soft delaminated or with the bigger gaps but unfortunately a lot of roofers still cut corners doing it and at the end of the day you're the one who is being cheated and the last way how roofing contractors are cheating you and cutting corners is not paying their bills. I see it over and over again all over the United States, especially with the companies who are so cheap. If contractors is waiving deductibles and the cheapest bid, a lot of times he just doesn't have money and money has to come from somewhere. So you might be getting new roof, you pay for it in full, and then you find out that your roofing contractor did not pay his bill at ABC Supply, did not pay his sales rep, did not pay his crew, and you might end up getting some liens on your house. Happens all the time. I remember I was working for a general contractor who went uh, bankrupt, and I remember homeowner was reaching out to me. They owed me a lot of money back then. Well, for me, it was a lot of money, $3,500 in 2007. Uh, and I remember homeowner was telling me, Dimitri, we want to pay him, but we want to make sure he pays you. And he was not paying me. So it happens all the time in our industry. Contractors who are cheap, contractors who don't understand business, they will cheat you by not paying their bills. And you're the one who will get in trouble because the last thing you want is <laughs> to get lean from your supplier, to get knock at the door from the sales rep or from the crew saying hey we didn't get paid so if you're the homeowner and you're looking for trustworthy contractors the purpose of this video was not to scare you there are a lot of good guys in this business i know a lot of them i built my own roofing insights directory i personally interview every single contractor before i list and recommend them if you're struggling with a recommendation you can reach out to us you can go to roofinginsights.com directory i'm going to put link in description below you can see who we have in your area if we don't have a contractor yet i will find you one again i know what it takes to be a good guy i know what it takes uh, to scam people and to cut corners uh, people who cut corners they're not always the bad guys sometimes they just don't know sometimes they were taught that way they never went to business school i actually have roofing school i have my business uh, i've been in business for seven years now and i never have uh, disputes with the homeowners have never been sued by employer or sub or homeowner uh, we care about customer service and if you would find contractor in our directory i promise you if he would do any of this i personally will back him up by twenty thousand dollars so if if any of my contractors would not register warranty i will address it if they would use cheaper accessories if they would be not licensed when they should be licensed if they're not pulling permits if they didn't replace rotted wood i don't care what it is if they made you wrong 
I will make it right at the end. So Roofing Insights directory comes with a $20,000 guarantee. I know what it takes to find a trustworthy contractor. I also know the headaches of those who hired the bad one. Go check it out. I'm here for you. Give me one of those if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Comment below. I read and answer all my comments. See you guys in the next video.